Hello, Stephen here, and welcome to a short video on creating a database connection polling service in Apache NiFi for MySQL. So to get started here, the very first thing we need to do here in NiFi is jump on over. So I like to, first of all, I like to create my main database connection services at the root level or the, my, uh, the NiFi flow canvas level. So go to configuration here. And if you're on the general, jump over to controller services add a new one and what we're looking for is db cp which is the connection pool here we'll select that and add it we'll go ahead and change the settings here we're going to name it my sql and as we see we have plenty of values here and properties that we need to set so before we do that though, we need to make sure we have our drivers for our JDBC drivers for my SQL available on the NiPy server. Or in this case, since I'm using a Docker sandbox that I've set up, I need to make sure that my Docker containers have access to the file somehow. So I'm gonna take that, I take a host level directory that I have and it's bound into the containers. So I'm gonna add the drivers there. So first thing we need to do then is go ahead and grab the drivers. So if you jump over here to the browser, we can see that if we go to dev.mysql.com forward slash downloads forward slash connector forward slash J, I'll put that link down there in the comments. You can you'll show up here to the download section and then what we need to do is you'll probably be on something different like Windows or something or select an operating system. What you wanna do is jump on down to platform independent and grab either versions. So you can get the tar archive or you can grab the zip version. And then what you want to do is decompress those and take the uh, jar file for the connector, JWC connector and add that to your directory. So we are gonna move over to MoX term in my case, to my host machine. And on my host machine here, I've already had my directory set up. So we can see here, let me clean this up. Okay, so right now we're inside of OPT NiFi. And under here, I have my drivers. So I'm gonna move there. And then inside our drivers, I've created a MySQL-8.0.23, so I just know what version of uh, the driver I have here, just because I have multiple versions later on. And inside of there, I've placed the driver itself. And just need the jar file. I don't need anything else to make this work. So we're good to go. So you want to make sure you can do this and that it's available. In my case, because this directory is bound to a container directory inside the container, any files I put inside the driver direct, uh, directory will show up inside of the container. So I'm good to go. All right, let's jump back over to NiFi. Now in Apache NiFi, let's go ahead and finish setting this one up, shall we? So we go back to configuration again, or settings. And then this time we want to go ahead and configure the connection pool. So we'll click on there. And let's go ahead and set this up. So first thing we need to do is set the database connection URL. So open this one up and it does support both expression language and parameters. So if you have a client IP or something like that and you wanna make it easier or something that you can change it easily, then I would recommend setting that up as a parameter inside the parameter context. Uh, in this case though, I'm just gonna set mine up and that is going to be the URL. So now, what I've done here is I've rearranged my containers a little bit. So my I've re or I've joined my S, my SQL container to my NiFi container network. So they both are inside the same network now. So in that case, I can refer to the my SQL container from NiFi container by its container name. And that's what I'm using here. And then I can point it to the port, which is 3306 for the default port for MySQL. And this is all you need. So it's JDBC colon MySQL colon forward slash forward slash. This would be your IP address to your server or server address, the port. And then if you wanted to default it to a specific database, 
then you would do forward slash database or whatever the database name is that you want it to default to. In that case, I'm gonna leave it alone and not populate that. And I'm good here. The zone or parameters are settings I'm using from the UJDFC URL connection string. So I'm leaving it alone. That's gonna be the same. The next thing I need to populate is the class name for the driver. In this case, I'm using com.mysql.jdbc.driver. Hit okay there. The next, the next important part is the database driver location. So the location, the path to the driver that, not, that the NiFi client must have, or the NiFi server must have access to. Now, in my case, it's not gonna be what I used and I just showed you on the host machine. It's actually what's inside of the container, what the bound uh, path is. So from the host machine, it was opt NiFi drivers. In this case, inside the container, it's actually uh, the binding is set to OPT, NiFi, NiFi current drivers, and then the directory shows up. So I just need to give it the directory because there's nothing else in there. Hit OK, and we're good to go. So these are the three basic things I need to get this connection working. Now there's some other settings we can set as well. We're not dealing with Kerberos in this case, so we don't need to set anything there. But we do have a database username and password that we need to set, so we're gonna be utilizing the root in this case, although that's not the most secure way to do it. So in a production environment, you wanna to wanna to do that, but this is a sandbox. And then we'll set the password, which was just time trap. And that's done there. Max wait time, I'll leave alone. So max total connection. So remember, this is a controller server and it's a connection pool. So what happens is when you have uh, processors that require that are going to use this connection, they take a connection from the pool that's available. So this is right now by default, it's always set to a total of eight maximum total connections. So you can go ahead and raise this if you need to. If you have a, if you're not restricted when you connect to the specific database you're trying to connect to, on how many connections you have, and maybe you have a lot of things that run concurrently that are touching the same server, then you may want to bump this up. Maybe eight's not enough. Just remember though, this is a pool. So uh, basically your NiFi processors that utilize these connections are kind of leasing them out for a little bit. And when they're done, they eventually go back to the pool. And then you have some settings that are very specific to how that's treated. So you have a minimum idle time for the connection. So uh, that it can remain in the idle in the pool without extra ones being created. Uh, lifetimes, times between eviction runs and all that good stuff. So these are the basic settings though you need in order to get this started and running. So we should be able to hit apply. And if there was anything wrong, like the path name or something I couldn't find, it would pop up a little arrow over here. So let me demonstrate that real quick. So if I had my path wrong, uh, just three nines there, apply that. You can see it does pop up saying that driver location is invalid against the path I provided. So I need to go ahead and change that and set it correctly. All right, so we're good there. Now I can go ahead and use the three options over here. So we have the configure, then we have the enable, and then we have the remove. So in this case, we're going to enable it. When you go to enable controller services, you're always presented with the scope option here. So if you've already created flows and they are referencing this component that we're getting ready to enable here, you would have a list here of all those different NiFi processors and components that reference it. And you would have an option. Same thing when you disable it. You can go in here and disable. And when you disable it, it's gonna disable obviously all those referencing components. So in this case, I would I have the option to start the service only or start, uh, start the service in the referencing components. So depending on your situation, you may wanna start both at once so you don't have to go through every single data flow and have to turn all those on one by one. Uh, but you wanna be careful too, because you could start something that you weren't intending to start and cause a problem for yourself later on down the road. So pay attention to what's in the list and whether or not you really want to. If you don't want referencing, if you have something that's referencing this component, but you don't want it to start, then I would recommend you go prior to doing this, disable those ones you don't want to start, but maybe you do have a mix of ones you do want to start and you want to use this option, then make sure the ones you just don't want to start at all are set to disable. It will only enable ones that are stopped. So I'll set up and hit enable.
we just wait for it to restart. And it would have extra steps for restarting the uh, components if we were doing that. So we're good to go. We can refresh here. We can see our option. Okay, so now we can see we no longer have the option to remove, but we do have the option to disable. And just like normal, we can't make changes to anything without doing this disable anyways. Okay, so we're done here. And if you need extra information on the usage of this, there is the usage uh, option here, which takes you to documentation on the usage of the connection pool. So don't forget about that. Let's go ahead and quit here. We're back at our main flow. So really what we want to do now, is just confirm that everything's working and do a quick test. Uh, so one easy way is just to grab that, do an execute SQL. Let's uh, send it to some, so maybe a log attribute. So we can at least test this. Oh, we'll send that over there. We'll terminate the failures because I'm pretty confident that this should work. Can't think of anything that would not work. And then we'll go ahead and open this. We'll set up scheduling. we we'll just make it five minutes so I don't slam the server. Now, an important thing to keep in mind when using something like that execute SQL is you're going to take this query and you're going to execute it against the server. If you're in a cluster environment, uh, well, first of all, if you're in a standalone environment and you're not clustered at all, then leaving this on all nodes doesn't really impact you. And it doesn't impact you if you change it to primary either. But if you're in a clustered environment like I am with three separate servers, then leaving it on all nodes means each one will execute this query. So uh, that may not be a good thing at all because that means that if you just have a static query in there, then you're going to query the same data three times, you'll grab duplicate data, and you'll pass it along down your flow. Now, there are ways to use it though where you dynamically create a query or you, from the processor preceding this, you could be passing in uh, variables where you set the uh, relationship to round robin, so each server gets its own uh, flow file going into it, which may have dynamic properties set to it, and then, all the servers could individually run queries, but they wouldn't run the same thing. We'll maybe look at that later. All right, so we just needed to confirm that this is working. So it requires us to put the connection pulling service in here. And really we just have the one right now. So we say, okay. And then we do our query, which is just gonna be a show databases. We're gonna change it to primary because I don't want it to run on all nodes, but there's a good reason to test it that way too. So ideally, I would probably would not want this on primary, but you know what, I'm doing a test. I want to verify that all my NiFi nodes in my cluster can each execute this flawlessly. So I'm gonna set it up to all nodes and just for this one test. I'll execute that and then I'll stop it. We can see the processing and three results just came back and they're all successful. Let's see if we have the intended result. Change it. And it's formatted and there we go. We can see all the databases available right now on the server. So that's how you set up a connection to a MySQL server.